<laughs> and then we'll get started. Thanks for being patient. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen now, um, and you should be able to see the speaker view on the right-hand side. If you can't, let me know, but I'm going to just play um, our presentation here so that everybody can see it. Okay, give me a thumbs up. Does that work? Does that look good to everyone? Yeah? Okay, perfect. All right, great. Let's get started. Okay, so the premise of all of this, obviously um, it, we're in unprecedented times right now where we there's a lot of uncertainty, we don't know what to expect. Um, and the one thing that we can do is control the controllable, right? So the only thing we can do at this point is control what we have control over. And for me, that looks like my morning routine every day. That looks like the things that I can control for my home, for my family, for myself. And most of all, the one thing that we can control is how we react, how we act, and what we do throughout our day. And the whole thing came about when um, I got a lot of questions that were, people were asking, you know, what are ways that you can reduce stress? What are ways that you can take care of yourself? And I know for most of the people on right now, I know for a fact that you all have some sort of a morning routine. I know that some of you want to make changes to it. And I know that, um, you know, others of you have a really strong morning routine. But our goal for today is that you can take away something to implement on Monday so that for these next seven days, you have something to feel really strong about and to set yourself up for some sort of success throughout the day. I know that we have a few moms on here, a few that aren't moms, but um, especially with the moms that have young kids and that we're trying to be teachers right now, that can be particularly stressful. And if we can start our day in a way where we are proactive rather than reactive, it can at least help to alleviate some of the stress. So ways to create space and crush your morning routine. Um, we will move on to the next slide here. And I'm gonna introduce to you somebody very, very special. So you see Cheyenne there waving at you. And hey, everybody. Hi Cheyenne. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a, a background on how we met because I think it's a special story and I think it will um, help you understand how this all kind of came about. And I was planning to do this webinar before this all unfolded the way it, um, it has. Um, we have somebody trying to log on. Hold on one second, let me help her here. Uh, um, okay, we'll let her log on hopefully. All right, so Cheyenne, let me back up. A couple weeks ago, I was invited to go on a hike and I didn't have spikes on my shoes, but it was very icy out. But for some reason I said, I'm just gonna go anyway and borrow somebody else's spikes. So I almost didn't go, I ended up going and thankfully I did because Cheyenne and I were hiking together in a group of about nine of us. We were together and I was picking her brain pretty much the entire hike and just asking her questions when I found out that she is a personal health and wellness coach, coach, a healer, an amazing yoga instructor, and she focuses specifically on nutrition. And so I was picking her brain the whole time because at that point I was feeling a little bit like, oh my goodness, I am at this plateau with my nutrition. I want to learn as much as I can from her on this hike because um, it was a great opportunity. So she probably thought, who is this girl asking me a thousand questions? But for some reason, we truly connected and bonded. And I happened to reach out to her a couple days later. And um, it kind of all just went from there. And we realized that we're both trying to do the same thing with helping inspire people and helping to um, just give people tools and ways that they can really make their lives and live their lives the best way possible. Um, she has a, a great background with yoga. She started as a yoga instructor and has, is, is incredible with the, um, her yoga practice. And she also is a healer. And she also has this aura about her that is just very positive and bright as if a light is shining on her. So for me, it has been such a gift um, to get to know her. So I'm going to let her introduce herself and give a little bit of a background while I help a couple people get on Zoom. And then we're going to go from there. So take it away, Cheyenne. So it's so nice to be here with you guys. Um, it's, it is such a crazy time right now. And more than ever, I'm so thankful for the tools I've been given because they have been supporting me and helping me stay grounded, as grounded as you could 
um, with what's happening in the news and what's happening in our communities. I've been teaching yoga and meditation for eight years. Um, I'm very passionate about helping people connect to self-love. I think that once you learn how to connect to your own self source, everything flows easier. And that's not something they teach us in school. That's not something that is taught in most homes. And so I've been lucky enough to have it taught to me and I'm trying to share that with as many people as I can because it's really changed my own life. Um, I'm, I love helping people set goals, but also goals that are measurable and specifically with health and wellness. So thanks for having me today. And um, I'm so thankful for meeting Alethea and having an opportunity to be here with you guys. Okay, quick question here. Can you guys see this screen that I'm moving around right now? Can you see that or you just see the presentation? I just see the presentation. Okay, wonderful, because it's blocking half of the presentation. So I just want to make sure it's not blocking half of it for you, but I also want to be able to see you guys. So that's good news. All right, let's move to the next slide. Okay, so what exactly is a morning routine? And I know most of you who are on here already know what a morning routine is, but for me, when I was researching and doing, making this presentation and sort of figuring out what to do, a lot of new things came up um, and a lot of new things came into my mind about morning routine. And I will say, since I've met Cheyenne, she has helped me also implement some things that I wasn't doing before. So anything that you do in the morning consistently over time is a morning routine. So that can be getting up, brushing your teeth. Maybe you say a prayer. Maybe you say five things you're thankful for. That in itself can be a, a morning routine. It doesn't have to be an hour or two hours, or it doesn't have to include a specific set of rules. Whatever works for you is what your morning routine is. That being said, I believe, and I know Cheyenne believes that there are certain things that if we do in our morning, our day will be that much more successful. I don't know if anyone has heard the speech or read the book, Make Your Bed, but if you haven't, go look it up because it's amazing. And it talks about the simple act of making your bed each and every morning is your first win of the day. So you open your eyes, you, you know, say something positive to yourself if you don't try that. Um, and then you get out of bed and hopefully you make your bed at some point in the next little while, because that is your first win of the day. And, and, and it's proven that if we have specific wins of the morning, then that's going to set ourselves up for a day where, where we can feel happy and, and less stressed. So making your bed. Well, I will say that I haven't made my bed in about two years, maybe three, because we have a rule in our house that the last person out of bed has to make it. And for about three years now, I've always gotten out of bed before Chris. So he's the one that has to make his bed. So while I'm not making my bed, I'm trying to do things that are really setting my day up for a productive, productive day for lending myself to wins and being open to wins because, you know, we can get up and, and think we're positive, but if we're not opening ourselves to positivity and wins and things that can help our day, then they're not going to come our way as easily or we're not going to recognize when they do come our way. So setting up your morning gives you um, a greater chance of accomplishing goals. And again, it has to be something that works for you. So we're going to give you all kinds of ideas. And what my hope is for you is that you'll take away the ideas and then make it into your own. And for people like Erica, I know you have an amazing morning routine. I know you do your exercise in the evening. Um, and I know you do too. Barbara, I know you wanna make a few changes to yours, but you have a routine. Little things that can be tweaked, I think will make a big dis difference. And over the course of seven days, we just want you to test it out and see how it works for you. It's all about the wins from the start, right? Okay. so. These are six ideas that we came up together that have really helped us to um, helped us to, to win our mornings and to do things in a positive way. I will say it's rare that I get to all six and it's rare that everything flows exactly how it's written here on paper because some mornings I have more time, some mornings I have less time. Some days I go to bed later and therefore I wake up later. And so my real goal is an earlier bedtime so that I can get up and hit all these six for these next seven days. So first sip, um, set intentions, meditation, read and write, movement, and list three. So we're going to go into detail of what those mean and I'll let Cheyenne take the first three away. Perfect. So that first sip, the, think of it as the first thing that breaks your fast from the night before. So it's a, in a way to set an intention for how you're going to fuel your body and your mind for the whole rest of your day. 
that's really important. I mean, most of us are trying to be health conscious and think about what we're actually putting in our bodies, but the very first sip you take, um, I think really can set the, the whole day up for success. I personally drink uh, warm lemon water. As soon as I, I get up, I do something called tongue scraping. I brush my teeth and then I make lemon water. And um, you can do that with just plain warm water if you have teeth sensitivities and you could also do just an herbal tea. Um, I was an avid coffee drinker, uh, hooked on caffeine for a really long time. And the one thing that's um, taken my practice to the next level is to reduce my caffeine intake. The, the second thing that's good about the lemon water is it gives your immune system a huge dose of vitamin C right in the, in the beginning, and it will wake up your digestion. Um, in the way that the world is today with a lot of the food that we have access to, a digestion is slower than it's intended to be. Um, that lemon water is a really good support for that. The second thing I wanna cover is setting intentions. Now you can set an intention for the day or the whole week, um, whatever works better for you. The, the way that this week was for me, I was setting a daily intention just to make tomorrow a better day than the day before. Um, we woke up in a different reality this week and I've been focusing on forgiveness and connection personally. I've been trying to do a checks and balances of the people who might need an extra phone call, might need an extra text, people that uh, relationships maybe not, be, not maybe were not left where they should have been left and just sending a hope you're well. Um, a, a lot of stuff like that comes up when the world gets shaky and I think it's a good time to lean in. If nothing else, it helps us know what is not in balance. And then the third, which is my favorite, is meditation. And meditation can be a little bit overwhelming, but it can also be really powerful. And the way that I view meditation is that when we pray, we're speaking to source or to God, however that shows up for you. And when we meditate, we get to listen. We get to hear what messages are there for us. We get to feel a sense of comfort. And um, that's, I, to me, the most important part of having a journal is to keep track of that. And I'll let Alethea go into item number four. All right. Okay, so read and write, move, and list three. Cheyenne just spoke about the first three, and those are three that I'm really working on. Those are three that don't come as naturally to me. Um, I've implemented my morning either hot water or tea, and sometimes lemon water, but recently my dentist told me I was drinking too much lemon water. So if I do do lemon water, I just do a couple little um, drops, or I do an herbal tea, or I do hot water. But that's something oh, very yeah. new to me. Yes? Can you hear me? Okay. So I just have a question about the lemon yes. water. Sure. Do you recommend that maybe we could use lemon essential oil? Is it the same? So, okay, that's a really great question. There's a couple different companies that offer food grade essential oils. If you're going to ingest any essential oils, make sure that they're food grade. The reason why is that essential oils have a carrier oil and some carrier oils are okay on our digestive and some carrier oils are going to wreak havoc. Okay. And and it, so it, you can reach out to the company that you get them from and they'll let you know, you know, okay. and their websites will usually mention. Um, now, this is how I think of food, right? Uh, in its raw natural form is going to be the very best for you. So the way that I do it is I go to Trader Joe's and buy a bag of the small lemons. They're, they're about half the size of the ones you see in a normal grocery store right now. Mm -hmm. I cut them in half and either do a whole lemon or a half a lemon, and I just squeeze that into an eight ounce cup of hot water. Not too hot. Um, I'm not trying to you know, burn anything. It's just you know, a little bit warmer than warm. Okay. I personally think that the vitamin C that you're gonna get from that lemon is more beneficial than the essential oil. Okay, okay, good point. Sorry to interrupt, thank no you. Problem. Please ask us questions. Yes, thank you. Okay. So first things first, read and write. And what, what exactly does my morning look like? I get up and I literally go to bed so excited to get up because I cherish and love my morning routine so much. Now, I will say I was not that person prior to about two years ago. I was the person when I was working without kids that I would give myself about 10 minutes in the morning to get out the door because I 
got ready fast, I ate breakfast on the go, and I liked my sleep, and I wanted my sleep more than anything else, which is great, and I, sleep is crucial, but I would press snooze, and then I would give myself 10 minutes, I would get ready and get out the door. I started little by little. So I now spend about an hour and a half to myself before anyone else in our house is up. But like I said, I started with five minutes. So please don't let this overwhelm you if you don't do that. And please know that you can start with two minutes and that can make a difference. So now what happens is I'm so excited to get up in the morning and I'm most excited to do my workout. Like that's my, I love that more than anything, but I know that people have different, different excite, things that excite them. But for me, I can't wait to get up and press play and do my workout. But what I've forced myself to do are some things that are really important. And without them, my workout won't mean as much. So those things are reading and writing, listing some priorities, and doing, um, doing the things that are setting intentions. And um, the first sip I know, of, of course, now is implemented as of about a week or two ago. So those are things that I'm working on. And those are things that I really have to calm myself down because a lot of times, and there will be mornings where I'm like, forget it, I just wanna work out because I don't have much time, the kids are gonna be up, and I skip that stuff. But I'm working really hard to not skip it because it's, it's changed so much for me. So reading and writing, I brought up my book so you can see what that looks like for me. So what I do, I've always had these little journals since the kids were born, and it's basically a mom's journal one a day, and you just write one thing from the day before for the, and then you'll, I'll give these to the kids at one point. So that takes me literally 10 seconds per book. So that's one of the things I do. Um, I also recently implemented a prompt journal. So for me, it's hard to sit down and know what to write. That's not something that has come, that comes naturally for me. However, the act of writing my thoughts and the act of writing some intentions has changed everything for me. So I recently got this little journal that, um, gives you a prompt and for example yesterday's prompt was career how is your work different today than when you first started what changes in growth are you thankful for and what is your role and then you can see on the side here i've written some affirmations and i'll read those to you i am strong i am ready i am beautiful i am enough i am a great mom kind of chokes me up to read them out loud that's crazy <laughs> Um, I am a wonderful wife. I am ready. I am prepared. I am a wonderful friend. I am thriving and my business is growing. So that does choke me up when I read it out loud. But those are things that I constantly have to work on. I mean, those are things that sometimes I have doubt and sometimes I say, am I a good mom? I don't know. But when I write these things out, it really truly gives me, tells my brain that yes, I am. And if we can tell our brain then it starts believing everything we say and then we start acting that and we start growing into that so what we do is we're training our subconscious to know and to be kind to ourselves and to love ourselves so that we can then play that role and actually live out that reality so writing has become something that i really truly love in the morning and it can take that will take me i don't know three minutes maybe four minutes so it doesn't take a long time and even if you don't want to write in a journal you can write down three affirmations. I am strong. I am ready. I am alive. Whatever you, whatever comes to your mind and that's enough and you can start small. Okay. One other thing that I have implemented and especially, I don't know about you guys, but during these times of uncertainty for me, whatever your higher power is for me, it's God, but whatever your higher power is, it really sort of comes into play more than ever. And I see myself calling on that more than ever. So I had bought this book years ago and it sat and got dust, but I recently opened this up as another little way to just prompt myself to, um, to read and write and think and pray and do what I need to do. So that's part of my morning routine. And then whatever book I'm reading at the time, if I have time, I'll read this. If not, I try to set some time aside later on. So whatever book I'm reading, whether it's on business, whether it's on self-improvement, whether it's on mother mothering, whatever it is, I have that with me too. And if there's time, I do that. If not, I save that for later. So that's my reading and writing time. My movement time, if you, if you know me at all, you know that I love that so much. And I exercise pretty much every day with the exception of giving my body a break on Sundays. Um, and for me, that works. And the, for me, that's what I like. Some people exercise two, three times a, a week, and that's sufficient. That's awesome. But it's really important to move in some way every single day. And I would say 10 to 20 minutes minimum, 
And that can mean at your lunch break, you're going to go walk around. Well, obviously we're all mostly working from home right now, but maybe you walk around your house 20 times. Maybe you do jumping jacks. Maybe you just move your body from side to side and dance. Like some sort of movement is crucial. And I will challenge you to do this. Um, Evgenia, Eugenia, you just came to mind because you're such an awesome dancer and, and ballet is such in your, in your genes. But I bet if all of us think about a time where we were dancing, where we were moving, where we woke up in a bad mood and we did some sort of exercise, if you think of what the result afterwards, there's no way you can be mad or upset. I mean, really, truly, it can flip the switch just like that. So some sort of movement every single day is crucial and it doesn't have to be a crazy high intensity ex uh, workout like I like. It can be, like I said, yoga. It can be breathing and moving. It can be dance. It can be whatever. So moving on to list three. Okay. So this is, this is perfect because I don't know about you guys, but I used to write down a list of about 15 to do's every single day. And it wasn't until my wise mother said, why are you doing that to yourself? Why are you self-sabotaging? And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, if you're writing down 15 things in a day to get done, like you no longer are a single person that can get those 15 things done. I mean, I've been a mother for nine years now, but it took me a really long time to understand and with her help that 15 things is way too many. So figure out what works for you. But for me, I'm really working on just listing three things because if I can get those three things accomplished, my day is a success and I, I feel better about myself. I don't beat myself up. So listing three top priorities, and I'll go to the next slide here. Um, whoops, I forgot to go to this slide. So <laughs> I'll briefly go over this really quickly. Reading and writing, this is what it can look like. And I'm going to be sending you this little prompt on the left hand side of your screen in case you need some sort of a prompt. And, and you can print this out. You could put laminate it and just wipe, you know, wipe it off each day. But it's really fun to look back and see what you've written if you don't want to do that. So I'll send that to you. But let's move on to the next one here. Um, one more thing to add to yeah. just in the read and write, um, it's really important to have something positive and inspiring to read right now. A lot of us are on autopilot for social media, how much time we spend on it, whatever's on the news, whatever programs we watch as a family. And it's really great to feed your minds with more good than bad. Obviously, we are all going to keep doing what our habits are. But I think the intention is to increase the good stuff that you're watching. There's a lot of really good stuff on Netflix that's inspiring. Goop has got a series right now that's really inspiring about healing and self-care. And there's tons of books out there. I'm sure you, every one of us has something in our home that is going to inspire us to be reading versus looking at the social media and the news that's very high anxiety causing. Um, and that's, that's all I have for read and write. I love that. Do you have anything to add to movement before you move on? Sure. Yeah. So um, you guys all know Lethea really well and you know the type of exercise that she does. I've been teaching yoga for eight years and I, it's part of my daily practice. To me, yoga helps you connect to your body. Um, after a really great workout, there's nothing better than a slow yoga class to fill all that strength that you've been building. It will help you sleep better. It will help you with um, anxiety and depression. It will really support you through this time. And there are a lot of great sources to get yoga as well. And feel free to reach out to Alethea for a few of those. And adding on to that, for anybody who has on-demand, um, Beachbody on-demand workouts, which is what I love, you have a 10-minute AM meditation and a 10-minute PM meditation right on there that a lot of people don't know that are there. So if you need some way to wake up in the morning and you don't want to do a long workout, a 10-minute morning meditation is right there at your fingertips as well as before bed. And the instructors are really great at just calming your mind and just getting a sense of um, grounding and just a way to sort of come back to where, what you are doing and where you are at that point in the day. So those are available already for those of you who have that. If you don't know where they are, let me know and I'll help you. Um, okay, and just one more thing on exercise. We all know it improves our mood. If you push play for three minutes, I bet you might push play for longer. So give it a shot and just even tell your mind, I'm just gonna do three minutes and maybe you'll go farther. Um, it boosts our energy, it promotes sleep. It's a social aspect, and although right now we are all kind of confined to our homes, 
if you've watched what I've been doing over the last little while, I now prefer to do my workouts at home for efficiency and just because of ease of doing it as a mom with kids. But we have a way to be social still in our community, in our in the app that we use, in the daily Zoom, if you need another extra layer of accountability. So there are ways to stay social, even though we're confined to our homes right now. So reach out if you have any questions about those. Obviously, it helps us control our weight, which is very important to overall health. And it combats health conditions that you know may arise, but we'll be able to handle them in a better way. Okay, next up is our top three, which I briefly covered earlier. So I was gonna change this slide when Cheyenne saw, brought something to my attention when we, when we were reviewing last night. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to leave this slide because it's a really good point to make. So priority one, you can see I have as family, priority two, I have as self, and priority three, I have as business. So these were just three things that came to my mind. However, I should put priority one as myself and priority two as family. And I didn't always, I did not always believe that. I always thought that I needed to give everything I had to my family. And then whatever was left over for me was what I got because that to me felt selfless. Is that right? Uh, but however, if we are not taking care of ourselves in the best way we can, that's more selfish than not because if we can take care of ourselves in the best way that we can, we can then be the best version of ourselves for other people. And so for me, taking care of myself, I had to flip my, my mindset because I thought that was selfish and it's really not. So taking care of ourselves first and foremost in the morning for me sets me up to be a better mom, um, to be a better wife, to be a better business person, friend, what, everything. So I need to flip those for the next presentation, but for now, I wanted to leave those to give you an idea that if you're not taking care of yourself best that you can, try to flip your mindset on that and try to do something to flip that because then you're going to be able to take care of others better. So relating this back, yes. I want to add to that. So I, this is the best way to remember this uh, analogy is that when you're on an airplane and they're going over the emergency mm -hmm. protocol, the first thing they say is put your mask on first and then your child's. We cannot pour from an empty cup, no matter how much that's our intent, no matter how much we want to help other people. If we are not taking care of ourselves to make sure we're in the best shape we can, emotional, spiritually, mentally, we have less to offer. Uh, we do the best we can, but I think it's important to remember that we're first and then we have so much more to give from there. Okay, so this was my idea for the top three. And ideally in a perfect world i would pick one priority for my family one for myself and one for my business however a lot of days look like three priorities for my business or three priorities for my family so ideally we want to think of those three priorities in the morning and just it can be you know while you're feeding the kids breakfast or while you're getting yourself ready to go to, to work um while you're brushing your teeth you can think of three things in your head and think of what are the three top things i need to accomplish today and then leave it at that. If you get through those first three, move on to four, five, and six, but don't put so much pressure on yourself. And I'm, I'm speaking to the, the choir here because I need to work on this as well, but think of those top three priorities and then move on to the rest. And if you get through those, feel proud, feel accomplished and tell yourself, way to go, you did that. You did what you wanted to do and now anything else is extra. Okay, so moving on, where do you go from here? So. What our hope is, is, and we're gonna, this isn't the end, we have a couple things at the end to help us um, to walk away feeling good about Monday morning, but planning is essential. If we don't plan, then it's really easy to fail and to then get into a downward spiral of negativity and, and be down on ourselves. If we spend a little time on the weekend planning for nutrition, planning for our week ahead, planning for how we're gonna take care of ourselves, it can go a long way. And that can be 10 minutes, it doesn't have to be an hour. I love getting all my highlighters out and I love using um, a planner like I have here and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, I love just really planning out, hold on, I gotta show you because it's fun. If you're a highlighter person, if you're anything like I am, you'll appreciate this. It does not have to be that involved, but I love doing this and I love going into Monday feeling like, okay, now I'm ready and I can take off some pressure. So planning, scheduling, if you don't use a calendar that's written or electronics, try to start using something that gives you prompts, especially when we're home all day and we're working from home. It can, get, it, it can be really easy to get just sucked into scrolling or whatever. And then you look at the clock and you're like, oh, where did that time go? So 
planning and setting reminders. And if you have Alexa or Google, I've learned recently that they're really helpful at setting to do's. So use those tools. And then most importantly is to add attachment to what you're doing. So I'm not talking about an attachment on an email. I'm talking about attachment in our hearts and attachment in our minds and add a really important and powerful why to why we're doing this. Because if we don't have a powerful why and we don't have some meaning that adds a really heartfelt attachment, then it really is not going to work and it really doesn't have any meaning. So really think about, you know, maybe you take a bath tonight or maybe you just sit in silence for a moment or maybe you spend time writing things down, add some attachment to it and add to your heart why that is so important to you. And if you find things that are on your list that aren't serving you, that aren't important and they're not crucial to, to get done, or that maybe is bringing negativity into your life, push those aside and do the things that are positive right now, especially because there's so much uncertainty out there. Okay. All right, so we are asking you to just commit to yourselves for seven days to a morning routine. And like I said, that can be brushing your teeth, saying three things you're grateful for, getting yourself ready, sitting down and having breakfast and being on your way. That can be enough. Our hope is that you'll take those six things that we talked about and choose what's right for you, or maybe you'll come up with your own six. It has to be something that is for you and it has to be something that you enjoy and that works for you. I will say that don't give up on it really fast. Like don't give up on journaling or don't give up on meditating. I really have to work hard at sitting still and, and calming my mind, but I know that it's so important. And if you look at every successful person out there, I guarantee you pretty much all, all of them will say having a morning routine and working on myself first is what keeps me going and it has brought me success. So make a commitment with yourself and then you're able to then shine on and, um, and help others. Okay, before we do this, um, I want to encourage you, if you haven't printed this out already, I want you to, help, to print it out or even to just look at it electronically and make notes on your, on your paper. And I want you to just talk about, in your mind, do you have a current routine? And if so, what's working and what's not working? And just jot down a few notes right there. Would you like anything to change? And if you would like something to change, jot it down. And then talk about the adding attachment, which is your, your why. So talk about and, and just write down even bullet points of what your why is and why it's important that you follow that heart. Then look at the six, or uh, oh, I left one off, darn it. Um, look at the five things I've listed and I'll add the sixth one and resend this out. But And find out what of those resonates with you and add your own to it. I want you to commit to some sort of exercise, whether it's a walk around the block, whether it's jumping jacks in your house, you do 25, whatever it is, I want you to write it down and commit to that for the seven days. I want you to also find some sort, or I invite you rather, I invite you to find some sort of a meditation to calm your mind. And when I first learned about meditation or, or heard about meditation rather, I thought it was kind of woo woo. I thought it was just like for certain people and not for everybody, but meditation can mean that you're, you're about to lose it and you're about to yell. Maybe your kids are doing something that's driving you crazy. Meditation can even mean taking a deep breath and just calming your mind for a minute and this exact example happened to me yesterday. I can't remember even what it was, but I was about to lose my mind and Chris happened to be there and I was opening the oven and I was about to take something out and turn around and yell. <laughs> and I didn't because he said, breathe, just breathe, just breathe. And he doesn't, like, he's not a proponent of all of this, but he knew enough to say, breathe. And I took five deep breaths while I was opening. My head was pretty much in the oven <laughs> and I took those five deep breaths and that can be a meditation in itself. So. It doesn't have to be that you sit on the floor and cross your legs, well, although I think that's really a great way to do it. If you're starting small, just start small and then we'll get there. Top three priorities of the week. So I'm asking you to do the week right here and then you can do day by day. So just pick three things that are really important to you this week, whether it's homeschooling, maybe it's getting your job organized at home, getting your space organized at home so you'll have a place to do your job. Whatever it is, just pick three things. and at the very least, just commit to one from each category if that's too much. If it's not, go for it all, because I think when you have the perfect storm, it can really be effective. Okay, are there any questions before we find a comfortable spot and just do a one minute little work um, on our brain? Anybody have questions or comments or anything they wanna add? Um, I have a question about the 10 minute meditations. 
um, are they, do they change every day or how does that work? No. So those are the same every day. However, if you get tired of them, there's so many things on YouTube and Cheyenne and I are going to send everybody who's on here an email and we're going to put some links in there and we'll put some of our favorites, but you'll start understanding like sometimes people's voices drive me nuts and it doesn't call me. If that person's voice drives you nuts, don't use that one. But though the ones on on demand um, are the same 10 minutes. However, there's about, I don't know, 300 different yogas on there. And some of them are five minutes. Some of them are 20, some of them are an hour. So you can also mix it up with those. And those are considered meditations as well. But again, we'll put some of our favorites in the email. Cheyenne, do you have anything more to add on that? Um, I, I just want to let you know that we will offer some guided meditations that we're going to record together. So you'll see those shortly. Um, we'll sh also share the one that we're going to do next with you. Okay. Are you ready cool. for me to start? Any other questions before we start? Barbara, I saw your message and I'll, I'll let you know the journal and everything I referred reference to today. I'll put that in the email so that you can use, you know, any of it that you like. And just a quick point on my, um, it's kind of ironic because if you know my previous background, I'm a financial advisor by, by education, and I worked in finance for 20 years. So this is actually Rachel Cruz. So if anybody knows Dave, Ram Dave Ramsey, he's the money guru, and I love Dave Ramsey's principles. So his daughter is Rachel Cruz, and I happened to buy this, I don't know, a month ago from Barnes & Noble, and I just kept it on my shelf, and I never used it. So, you know, when you're thinking of different, different things that will work for you, I love this because money and finance is my background. However, Rachel is amazing and she, oh, that's her main focus. She helps people with uh, retirement and, on, on, and money and asset allocation, but she has really done a wonderful job, I think, of just talking about time, career, personal development, relationships, because she too knows that in order for herself to be successful and to have a successful business and to inspire and help other people, this is all very important to her too. So. Find what works best for you. Find a journal that you love. Um, I have a couple different ones here, and I know Cheyenne does too. I really, truly love this one too, which is the five-minute journal. This one's really helpful because it says, it gives you a quote at the top. It then says, I'm grateful for. It says, what would make today great? Daily affirmations. And then this part is, is for when you go to bed. And it says, three amazing things that happened today, and how could I have made today even better? And on that note, I'll be quiet and turn it over, but I have one more thing to say. During this time of craziness going on, I have started a list that is called my silver lining list. And so I am writing down things because homeschooling is rough. Like I'm not going to lie, but there are things that happen every single day that would not happen if my kids were in school for most of the day. One of which yesterday I wrote down was baking bread and making rolls. Like that would never happen unless we had ample time on the weekend. So I'm making a list of silver lining things that are happening to me right now because of what's going on in our world. So I encourage you to make a silver lining list. And then when all this passes and we're through with it, we can look back and say, my gosh, those were really gifts to me in a time of uncertainty and a time of, of just things being so unclear. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to turn it over to Cheyenne, find a comfortable spot and let's do this. So I just want to invite everyone to take a deep breath in. and release that out. Um, with our priorities, happiness is, is the goal. Our goal is to feel joy in all aspects of life. When we write our priorities, it's important to think about how we're feeling. Um, where you go from here is really up to you. Be before we go into this meditation, I just wanted you to take a couple, couple thoughts, a couple moments to find a couple comfortable seat, and hopefully it's quiet. I'm gonna read something to you, and then we're gonna go through the meditation. How can you mother yourself? You are more held than you can possibly imagine, loved and cherished so dearly that if you knew, you would not spend one second of your life in separation, worry, or fear. Let the mother inside carry your burdens. Let her rock, her rock away your fears. Lay all of your worries, regrets, shame, and guilt away. Please, please, sweet child, do not fear. You are love in motion. If you allow it, you are already healed. Remind you of your goodness. Love away your fears. 
Your capacity to love and hold others is limited to your capacity to love and hold yourself. Be compassionate with your sweet body, mind, and soul. Treat yourself like the beautiful spirit that you truly are. Remind yourself that you are doing your very best and try not to carry it all on your own. You have got this. Forgive yourself and feel your own love. Wherever you are, take a deep breath. Close your eyes or keep them open. Just choose an area or object to focus on. Slowly inhale to the count of four. Now slowly exhale for the count of five. <clears throat> As you continue with this breathing pattern, begin to picture a light at the top of your head. Slowly inhale to the count of four. Take a brief pause and now slowly exhale to the count of five. Allow the light to slowly scan down your body, becoming aware of each area as it scans over you. Notice any tension and tightness as you scan. Release it. Slowly inhale to the count of four. Nice pause and slowly exhale to the count of five. Now scan from your head to your neck, through your face, to your shoulders, all the way down to you till you get to your toes. Now one last time, slowly inhale to the count of four. and slowly exhale to the count of five. Slowly bring, blink your eyes open. Put your hands on your heart and take one big breath. You might wanna take a moment and journal. What did you see? What did you feel or anything you noticed in this moment of pause for yourself? And if you have printed out the PDF, there's a little spot to write down what came to mind and what you thought or saw or felt. So feel free to use that if you want to. Otherwise, just write it on any little piece of paper. This practice helps me to tune in and helps me to know who I need to reach out to, what my body needs, what my mind needs, what foods my body is hoping that I'm gonna give it that day. This is something that really helps me tune in um, does anyone want to share anything from their meditation? When I did this practice last night uh, with Alethea, we just shared it together. Um, my mom came up for me, and I, as soon as we got off the phone, I reached out to her, and she was in tears, and she just said, I am having such a hard time with this. This is overwhelming. Um, I work in at the blood laboratory for you. We do 65,000 samples a day we're testing. And part of that is we're testing for COVID. And she was reaching out to me really hoping for some feedback, some insight into what's happening. And um, during our meditation, I really felt her call. And so I, it was so great to reach out and to be able to comfort her the best that I could from where I'm at. Um, I'm gonna send you guys this meditation through Alethea so that you can do it on your own. Um, you can change it, whatever feels good to you. This is a, a one minute meditation that is all over the place. This is just one thing you can do to help yourself calm during this time. And thank you for letting me be a part of your call this morning. It's so nice to be with all of you. 
And thank you all. I know how crazy Saturdays can be. Um, we just really feel grateful that you took the time to be here and hopefully you walk away with one thing. And I always say, my dad taught me this actually, when I went to all kinds of meetings for business, a lot of times you'd hear from speakers that may not have resonated or were boring or something just wasn't clicking for you. But if, if he taught me, if I walked away with one thing that I can help my own life with, and if I walked away with one thing that would make me better, a better person for that day or moment, then it was worth it. Even if it was an all day event and I came away with one thing. So hopefully you're walking away with at least one thing today that can help you. And um, I think all of you are wonderful and took time for yourselves this morning. So tonight when you get home, I'm sorry, when you, we're all home, what am I saying? <laughs> tonight when you get, go to bed, I want you to look <laughs> in the mirror and just think to yourself and say to yourself, like in the mirror, if you can say it out loud without thinking you're crazy, um, just say to yourself, thank you, Alethea, for taking the time today to really focus on how I can improve my life. And just say it out loud to yourself. It may feel silly, but I promise you, you'll feel good going to bed and you'll feel calm and you'll feel relaxed. And one more thing to add, if you, if you go to sleep at night and you have trouble calming your mind, that little breathing exercise of four in, five out can really help. And I used that last night because I was excited for this and things were racing in my head for what we were going to talk about today. And I used that four in, five out, and it really helped calm me. So I hope it was wor worthwhile and, and worth your time. We are going to be doing more of these. We're really excited about it. And I'm going to be sending you an email with all the resources, plus a little bit of a questionnaire just to give us feedback on you know what you thought. And um, it's kind of like you are part of our, our test group almost because these are this is very early on in what we're going to be doing and um, I really appreciate you all being here. So any questions, anything you want to add? If not, have a wonderful Saturday and just make it the best you can and start your silver lining list. I just want to say hi to Miss Saloya. I don't know if you remember who I am. It's Angela Parenti. <laughs> And then Cheyenne, I spoke to you on the phone the other day, so it's great. Yes, nice to meet you. Me too, looking forward to this. Thanks so much for this morning. Yeah. Hi, Angela. It's so <laughs> fun to meet her. <laughs> I know. Crazy. How are you? Good. Thank Good. you. This was wonderful. Thanks. And just FYI, Miss Sawoya, who's speaking right now, um, we call her Miss Sawoya because she was our dance teacher in high school, and she's still... <laughs> teaches dance and movement and she's such a believer in all of this and she she touches hundreds of, of oh. high school students so whatever we can pass and flow through you to them is is amazing so thanks for being here everybody you're so kind thank you <laughs> have a beautiful saturday you bye 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 guys bye.